Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Last week I made a video on the incredible Petra Theatre, which like many structures we still see in this part of Jordan, was cut straight from the sandstone mountains. All of these structures were carved from around 500 BC and for several hundred years that followed, through various different phases of history, from Nabataean rule all the way through to Roman. One of the most incredible structures is the treasury, one of the largest and most elaborate in Petra, and thought to be the mausoleum of the Nabataean king Aratas IV of the 1st century AD, when Petra was a city-state of the Roman Empire. I would include this structure in my own Seven Wonders of the Ancient World because it really is truly breathtaking, and widely known about because of its inclusion in the 1989 film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade with Harrison Ford and the late great Sean Connery. After you, Junior. Yes, sir. Ah! It's called the Treasury, aka al Kazne in Arabic, because of the decorative stone urn that's seen high on the second level, as people in the early 19th century did believe it contained treasure, when in fact it is solid sandstone. There is also another legend that comes from the story of Moses. Some say the Egyptian pharaoh that chased Moses across the Red Sea did escape the waters, and created this structure by magic and used it to store his treasures as he continued his pursuit of Moses. Others claim that pirates hid loot in the urn. The urn does show significant damage from bullets, which is thought to have been the handiwork of Bedouins in the early 20th century, in the hope that treasure would spill out on the ground below. But alas, the treasury is an elaborate mausoleum and crypt for a very rich and powerful king of the Nabataean people of Petra. It was rediscovered in 1812 by Johann Ludwig Burghardt and soon became one of the standout ancient structures in the Middle East. By the 1920s, it was already a tourist destination, and today, Petra is a major tourism hotspot thanks in part to this incredible rock cut structure. But how was the treasury even carved in the first place? The iron and steel tools of the day would have had no problem cutting the sandstone and the interiors can be explained by conventional methods. But it's the outward facing facade, its huge size on a sheer almost vertical rock face that does puzzle many people. It was certainly cut with conventional tools and we can still see the clear tool marks showing the chiseling techniques of the day. But the problem is really just access, because it's such a tall structure. This part of the world also has a lack of trees, meaning one idea of simple scaffolding is possible, but also very unlikely. So, was there another way? Well, when we look at the rock formation, we can see that to the right of the treasury, the mountain sticks out into the valley. It doesn't continue on in a sheer vertical and flat fashion as you move from left to right. Also, the top of this rock formation that's sticking out into the valley is roughly the same height as the treasury itself. That to me is the key to understanding how workers gained access. It is likely that before it was cut, the mountain may have looked something like this, as shown in a Nova documentary I've linked below in the description but I think it may have been more like this, and we can see that this side of the protrusion has also been cut. We can see that this is likely the case when we view the structure on the incredible Airpano website, that there is more cut rock to the right compared to the left. Either way, the mountain sticks out into the valley at the precise position the treasury was cut, and this protruding rock is also at the exact same height as the treasury. This can't be a mere coincidence. This area was chosen for the treasury simply because of the form of the rock. For such a structure to be accomplished, the stonemasons would not start from the bottom and work up, but this would have clearly been a top-down construction, starting by standing on top of this part of the mountain that's sticking out into the valley and then cutting down. 
The first job is to create a flat surface to work from, and also flat ground to stand on. Labourers would have cut away at the rock to create a clear surface for the artisans, as well as a rock platform to stand on. Then the artisan masons would have moved in to start work on the temple's intricate design. The labourers would have then continued to cut downward a few more feet as the artisans worked on the rock face and facade. No wood was even needed. But if the Nova documentary is correct though, and originally the rock face looked more like this, then you could simply create a narrow trench and then add a pinned wooden platform to work on. The platform could then be moved down at intervals as the workers progressed down the structure. This protruding rock to the right of the treasury is the key to understanding how the work was done. It was certainly the access point for the masons who began the work and I wonder if these steps were also somehow related to the construction phase. After the top half of the structure was cut, the debris from the work so far would have created a kind of crude ramp up to the level the masons were working at. Access was now incredibly easy and as they got lower and lower, the debris was simply taken away. This to me is the most logical and efficient way to complete this incredible work, in a region with very limited supply of wood. It would have given access without the need of any sort of scaffolding. Many eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed the crude footholds that are cut into the wall and seen on either side of the facade. Some people have speculated that these were used by the builders. But this is unlikely because, as you can see, they are very crude and also cut into the cut face itself. Others have speculated that these could have been where ancient wooden scaffolding was anchored. But if that was the case, why would the Nabataean masons leave them there, taking away from the final splendour of their creation? They're also not found at any other structure in Petra. Well, these footholds were likely cut by much later tomb robbers, looking for a way to get to the urn at the top of the structure as they searched in vain for treasure, and so it's highly unlikely they do relate to the treasury's construction. I think the top-down approach to create the treasury is the only viable explanation and it can be applied to every rock-cut structure and facade at Petra. We can even see evidence of how this was possible in the field today as the rock often sticks out to the left or the right of a rock-cut tomb. Petra is an incredible lost city of the ancient world, a true bucket list location, and thanks to the huge amount of work that's been done at the site, archaeologists and geoscientists do have a good understanding. The builders of Petra were incredibly efficient, they were amazing artisans, and being cut from the natural sandstone mountains, their work continues to stand the test of time. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.